We be fussing, we be screaming But you the one I wanna lay beside this evening I'm gonna come back even when I'm leaving You give good love and I receive it When you feeling down, I'ma sing to you That ring on your finger got a ring to it That's that real love, God fearing love It may not be how we dreamed it, but it's still love Can we ever sit down? Talk to me nice, I'ma talk back, baby You know how we get down Get away, we gon' yeah, work it yeah. out Julius, and this is my lovely wife. What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? Uh. What you gonna do when they come for you? I'm about to own and my way. Police don't think it no way. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And what's, what was that? Cops? Yeah. You remember cops, dog? That was like the first reality TV. <laughs> like, they was really chasing them down, really chasing dog. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> And they was slanging them to the ground, bro. <laughs> I see some funny episodes of cops, cops was, man. That was like reality TV at its finest. When they'd be arresting them and then do the getaway and start running all crazy up the and street. The cameraman's like, no. <laughs> and the cameraman's like, no. And the cameraman's not being paid enough money at all. Because <laughs> the cameraman is keeping up with these dudes, man. We I never need forget. That back. I was in Detroit this one time. I was opening up some Kroger stores up there. And I was trying to find my way through the ho- to my hotel. And it was taking me through, you know, Detroit. You got eight miles. You got some, some spots. Seven miles, uh-huh. And it was taking me through some neighborhood. And I came to a stop sign, no lie. And I seen this man running. Whoa! I mean, he was gone. And about, I don't know, 30 seconds later, I see these two cops running, trying to catch him. And the one tripped and fell on her face. Lord. And the one just had to keep running without her. You remember the one show where they would, uh, where they was catching the, the the child molesters? Oh, the Dateline. Dateline. Bro, NBC. he used to come out of. He used to come out like, "Hey, John." He caught the one dude, <laughs> dog. The one dude. Yeah, well, was it, his pants was down, he, wasn't it? Well, he caught. There was so many different situations, but he came out one time. She was like, "I'll be down down in a minute." You get some cookies. And and he was unbuckling his pants like And cool. then dude came in from Dayline and was like, hey, so what's going on, John? <laughs> <laughs> John was like, they was going to jail. <laughs> he tried to run out. Remember, like, dudes was trying to run out and get caught, dog, mangled. And no, they was lying. Like, I mean, I just, I just was coming over because, uh, you know, she said she needed some help. That oh, was yeah. the craziest. Did you, she was soliciting. We have the record. You were soliciting. A th- oh, she's 13. God. Reality TV has 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 it gotten better or worse? Well, well, now it's staged. That it's stuff staged. was real. That was real stuff. Cops man. was real stuff. That was real. The Dateline John was real stuff. You was catching. It was in the act. In the act of being. That ridiculous. was bro. They would pull up, and it, in my mind, I was watching it, and and or they was little boys. Anyways, let's go. I don't even want to think about it. I'm like, I don't even think about it. It's so crazy. But just the re- the real reactions that I need, they were I getting need that back in my life. From the situation was so real, it ain't. That's staged. reality TV yeah. nowadays, yeah, man. All of that stuff is edited. It is with a slant. It is. Um, it's it's not real. Now they're really filming the whole time, but the post edit stuff it makes it it changes it something that it it's not. That's why we got something special. Because this is real. To y'all. But anyways. David don't be editing none of this out. Yeah, no. If just I a... slap Julius, it's going to be real. Hey, let me tell you something right now. I'm not going to slap you. If you do, the world well, <laughs> is going to witness some craziness. Would you hit me back? Maybe. You wouldn't be able to restrain yourself? Depends on how you, how you caught me. Okay. All right. If you catch me mid sentence unexpected, the reaction might be might be by you And so if a little spittle came out your mouth a little bit, you feel disrespected as a man? Ooh we. Like if I just wow it's, Ooh we. You mean you you would mm. the reaction might might overtake what I would really want to do. What if what if I, I punched you in the temple? Ooh. Like you just and we was just getting into it and you said Ooh. something crazy and I was just like, knuckle? Yeah, just boom, right in the temple, would you? I might, I might pretzel you out. Dang, 
Yeah, I might press you out. Stretch I, can't, out I, can't, I can't be mad at you. Stretch for out now. your hamstring. <laughs> Something I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. Because my hamstring, is, is they sore right now from working out. So just the the thought of, of them going the opposite direction. Yes, with force. Yeah. Okay. With a little force. I would, I would never. What we got? <laughs> what we got on the menu today? Y'all listen, I, I, we've been talking about this relationship uh, endurance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and I think it's a good conversation to continue because we're enduring. You see how I did that? Oh, um, that's a play on words. In. You know so what I, I thought in. about was the scripture. What? The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to them that endure to the end. So really, basically what you're saying is, is marriage is not an event. Mighty God, it is not. It's not an event. That's so good. It's a race. And the only one that's going to get to the finish line is the one who endures. Not the one who's fast. No. Not the one who's the strongest. Mm -hmm. And let me tell y'all something, because y'all know when I start pointing my finger, I'll be meaning oh, what I'm boy. saying and I say what I mean. This is, we're talking about reality TV. You have reality marriages. You have marriages that are a front. They are a facade. Mm. They, they, are, they, are, they look strong or it's moving really fast or it looks appealing and they have no endurance. And let me tell y'all something. Me and, me and this... Uh, fine young lady right here. You better get your words right. Listen, check this out. She really get on my nerves. In real time. In real life, I really get on her nerves for real. What a mighty God hey, we serve. We gotta, we gotta work stuff out for real. Like, we do this and it's really who we are. Yeah. Our banter is natural. It's, it's not fake. It's very organic. We really get into it. We got into it the other day and we were just going back and forth and the kids, oh, my God. son, my sons came out the, came out their bedroom. So they hate when we argue, and like, we don't be screaming. At there's each no other, yelling. But they don't do even disagree. like a difference of, of opinion. opinion. They don't even want that. They don't want none of that. And so they came downstairs. Um, and King was like, "See, see, Daddy, see." He was you really said the mediator. Get a divorce. He said, "But you keep doing that right there. Y'all going to end up getting a divorce." Because in their mind, disagreements equal divorce. Yes. Which I, that's a word for that them is. because that it could. And so they sat Indian style and Julius and I continue to, to the conversation. hash it out. I recorded it. I he recorded did. it right there in front of them. They got real life. And what I told them was I said, listen, here's the truth. Y'all said mommy and daddy have situations where we have to, we have to work through. Yeah, some we don't agree on everything. Sometimes it's, it's a real thing, but, but we're enduring. Mm -hmm. But I think this is, this was the blessing in it. The what was blessing it? was is that we were at um, an unsaid couple's home. Yeah. And our children were there. Yep. And the unsaid couple really got into it for A real. A real argument. They was really yelling and screaming at each other for real. Yeah. Like it, was, it was unhealthy. Yeah. And Ashanti and I had to mediate the situation and provide some comfort in the moment. Yeah. And, and our children had an opportunity to see what it means what real argument to really argument be going like. back and forth yeah. for real. Like yeah. Ashanti and I, we have disagreements we got to work through and we'll be sharp with each other at times in our tone. I, to be honest, in 12 years, I don't think Julius and I have ever argued. Like screamed. That is ne that has never had. I'm talking about like stop out, walk out. Right. There was this one time he what? did remember, but it was business related. He what? was, he was having a, um, a real bad argument on the phone with one of our employees. And I know my husband very well. And it was getting to a level that was just, we couldn't afford for the individual he was yelling at. Well, they were yelling back and forth. We couldn't afford for this individual to say, bunk it and walk away. And I knew that. And I am very preventative by nature. So I kept hassling him to, for him to give me the phone to get off the phone with this individual and Julius snapped. He threw the phone and he walked out and he went up the street and I had to talk to the person on the phone. But as I wasn't, me and him weren't arguing, but he was so... I was livid. I, I probably have never seen him that mad before in 12 years. Mm. So that was the only time. But as far as like yelling at each other, talking about each other's mamas, Telling somebody where they can go, give me my keys, I'm out of here. No. I think, I think, mm -hmm. um, so because we want to endure. So y'all, marriage is real life. Like you, you really have to be intentional 
about making progress in your marriage, about um, doing things better, about getting better. And we're talking about endurance. You and ain't never slept on the couch in 12 years. Never. I never slept on the I couch. I never forget Julius told me, he said, I pay the bills up in here. I wish I would sleep somewhere else besides my bed. I did. I did say that. I meant that. I meant that. But another thing that I'm going to talk about when it talks about endurance is, and this is a key factor, especially for my people, I need you to listen, for my people who are um, aspirational, you have goals, whether it's corporate America, whether it's entrepreneurship, whatever it is that you're involved in, you have goals, you want to obtain them, you want to reach them. And I think one of the dangers in our pursuit of our aspirations, of our goals, of whatever it is that we're trying to get towards is we start limiting or we start depreciating or we start diminishing the time that we make for our spouses and our significant others. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think what happens is if we're not careful, the aspiration becomes the top priority and not the spouse. If your aspirations are more important than your spouse, there's a problem that needs to be worked out. I agree. I don't think it's limited, though, to aspirations. Well, no, it's not. It's not. I was just using that as an example. Yeah, because, I mean, I think you're talking, when you say aspirations, you, everybody dreams and everybody has, excuse me, things that they want to do. You have some nine to fivers that are consumed. Of course. And exhausted. Of course. And we're not even going to talk about when the children enter the equation. It's a whole nother story. So this is, this is about to be yeah. real so, good. Listen, you have to make time for your spouse and your significant other. Make time. Make time. So you're talking about being intentional. Well, it has to be a level of intentionality. And here's the, here's the key. Here's the key. The excuse of I don't have time is a very, very dangerous excuse. And this is why. Why? Because the sanctity of the 24-hour time frame was established by God. Mm. And so then to say that you don't have time is to almost indirectly suggest God should have given us more that God made a mistake in giving us 24 hours. Well, God didn't make no mistakes, but man did by doing daylight savings time. But that's a whole nother conversation. No, we so. make the mistakes by not properly prioritizing our time within the framework of those 24 hours. I'm going to be honest with you, though, because this is something I'm struggling with right now. And I've gotten revelation this week. And I didn't want to say this to you because you're going to try to hold me to it. Uh oh. But I am not a morning person. I repeat, I do not like waking up when it is so dark, like six, five thirty. I don't like it. But recently we started a new cleaning account. Um, and for those who don't know, Julius and I have a cleaning business and I had to wake up and be at the locale at 7 a.m. Y'all was so pissed off. At him. I was just making stuff up just to be mad because I was mad because I didn't I didn't want to wake up. And so after like day three, I realized that it was better for me to be up early. Now I'm saying this. I don't even know why I'm putting it on wax because now it's out there forever. It's better for me to be up early. See stuff like that. Just to steam me up. And the reason why this steam me up is because I have been trying to tell preaching me. this for the longest. But sometimes people have, have to come been into their own rebutting and rebellious and ridiculous for the longest. Yeah, you put all them R's together right there. Because it was simple. Because you're a preacher. No, because I've thought about it multiple times. I've just held my tongue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll be. Yeah, I've just held my tongue. And so, and so I think though, in all seriousness, I think the proper prioritization of that 24 hour framework. Correct. And so because critical. of that, y'all, we've had some extra time because I am, I'm a, I'm up early, I'm getting stuff done. And then the things that was lagging throughout the day that I was then getting mad at him for not doing, I'm doing that stuff because I'm already up. I'm already out. I'm already getting it done. So now when I come home, we have more time. Mm, 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 mm. The, it, it, oh, it's, it's, I don't want to admit it, but I mean, it's, 
I do have the time. You do have the time. Mm. You don't want to do it because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to wake up at 5, 30, 6 in the morning when your bed is warm. You don't want to. But in doing that, we had extra time this yeah, week. And, and I think, though, like when it comes to, you know, your marriage, we're talking about some tools to help you endure. Yeah. One of those tools, tips, if you will, that will help you do that is that you make time for one another. And I think the key is, is make. So essentially, you're making time by, by doing something that you don't want to do. Yes, sir. In order to create time for us. And I think that's where a lot of relationships end up going south a little bit is because there's almost like this hidden expectation that you're going to make a sacrifice in order for us to have time. And when I see that you're not doing that, when you're making the decision to not make that sacrifice in order for us to have time, that sends a message. It sends an unsaid message that a lot of the times people catch. And so because it was a signal that was unsaid, it becomes a frustration that's not expressed. Mm. And so, you understand, am I making any sense? Mm -hmm. And so you're sending me an unsaid signal. Our time is not important. How am I drawing that conclusion? Because you're not doing the things that are necessary to carve out time for us. Okay, duly noted. And so then I'm frustrated, and so I'm not going to say nothing to you about it because you didn't, you didn't, it was unsaid. So if we in this unsaid realm, let's be there then. Let me ask this question to you. Because you're talking about make, being intentional with your time, um, because we're talking about endurance. Could you marry making time for your spouse also making their lives easier? Making time can be however time needs to be made. There's no set way to make time. So right. absolutely, time can be made if the goal is for us to be together. Then that means both of us- We're talking about to, physically being together or, or just, just- Yeah, making time, okay. spending time. So if the goal is for us to spend time, both of us are going to have to do some things in order for that to be a reality. So I, let me tell you what I, what I believe, um, what was happening with us. So I was refusing to wake up earlier to handle business. And so then what was happening is the things that in your mind, I'm not making time for what we need to do as a family unit. And now you don't want to spend time. Potentially. Right, it's a, it, no, it, really that was what was happening. And so when I'm saying making your life easier, making your spouse life easier, if, if you're not willing to sacrifice to make the time to do what needs to be done, whether it be to spend time with your spouse, your spouse now has extra time or less stress. The byproduct of that is now we get to chill. I don't want to sit around and chill and it's all this stuff that ain't done. Correct. And I think that's, I think you're right. I think you're right. And I think it's kind of like a give and take situation. Yeah. So there's some things that I need to do for you and then there's some things that you need to do for me. Yes. And that's making time yes. for us. And that looks that looks different. Yeah. It looks like maybe me bringing the clothes, the pile of clothes that's in our bedroom downstairs. Correct. It 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 I ain't like how you said that. I ain't like how you said. It. You said that with some with some Or wrecked. Right. Or or it looks like or it looks like um doing the billing on time. Wait a second. I feel seen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel seen. But but Correct. nonetheless, it means that it, because ultimately both of those things affect us. And I'm going to tell you, you taught me something a while ago. You said when people don't care about what you care about, it does something to the relationship. Absolutely. And so when you are not caring about the things that I care about, I am now offended and now it affects our time. I don't want, you don't care about the clothes piling up. You don't, you're, you're not caring about the things that I, I care about my home. Y'all like I do. I care about my home. I care about when it's clean. I care about all that stuff. It's priority for me. It's not priority for Julius because what he cares about is like vision casting and business and he's an entrepreneur in your mind. And so what happens is our crosshairs are always when we don't care about the other person's stuff. 
And then what it does is it it inadvertently, is that a word? Inadvertently, yeah. Affects the time that we now spend with each other because now we're spending time doing the things that each other didn't care about. Yeah. I th I think I think one of the things that it, it causes is is when you're when you're how could I word this? Um I think sometimes you could be more focused on sameness than you are synergy. Wow. Yeah. And so the reality is That's this, actually excellent. Yeah. It just clicked for me. Yeah, you're more focused on sameness than you are synergy. Expound on that. So what I'm saying is, is you value us valuing the same thing, and that's that's not how it is. It's not, not how it should be. And and I value synergy. And so what I realize about synergy is, is that we can't both be doing the same thing like that. Correct. In order for our family unit to have synergy, in order Correct. for it to work, in order for it to flow. You know what I'm saying? And so if if I value I synergy. synergy and you value sameness, then I think we could be in conflict with one another because all you care about is us doing the same thing or liking the same thing. And then all I care about is, is things flowing smoothly. And so in my mind, you want me to be casting vision and to be thinking about business and to be thinking about future endeavors for our family. Because if I'm not doing that, and then I'm focused in on whether or not if the clothes got taken down to get washed, and I'm not saying that I shouldn't do that. That's not what I'm saying. This but that the can't that. be your... So basically, synergy is where an individual is putting their energy. Yeah. And so, so you're, you're dead on. Synergy is the interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations, substances, or other agents to produce a combined effect greater yes. than the sum of their separate effects. Yes. So. Are you kidding me right now? It happens. You know, it's, we're podcasting. Anyway, I think what you're saying is dope. My energy and your energy have to be on two separate things for the greater good of a synergistic family life. Yes. What happens is, I'm telling you, as a woman, this is what happens. We be pissy because y'all don't do the dishes. We be pissy because y'all don't do the clothes. We're, we're, I'm mad at you for not being a doer in my element. When in reality, that's where my energy should be going. And I'm not saying this is a, 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 a man, a woman, man male woman thing. Or a female role because thing. It, it could be the man. It could if be. that is where your energy is supposed to be, if you are a stay at home dad and that is where your energy is supposed to be, you cannot be upset with me because my energy is over here. Together, collectively, we should be bringing our energy together to synergize the unit. Yeah, because because if I'm if I'm focused on, you know, where I should be focused on and you're focused on where you should be focused on, that is indirectly creating opportunities for us to spend time. It because is. a lot of the time the time that we should be spending with each other, we end up spending feuding because it's co it's competition and not synergy yeah because because that we shouldn't be spending that time feuding if we would have just both been doing what we were supposed to do then i would have had my stuff done you would have had your stuff done and now we can come together and have quality time now we can come together and have quality time but now we come together it's fighting all the time because i'm legit comparing what you do compared to what i do and coming to the conclusion that it's not it's not more important than what i got going on yeah. And then you're doing the same thing. Like, yeah. You ain't what you what you're doing is not and so it's it's now this and so now we can won't even have quality time. We can't even have pillow talk. We can't even be intimate and trust yeah. because we weren't doing our due diligence and putting the energy to what we both have been called to do. And here's what it's not. It's not a license for somebody for a man who is not helping out around the house, but you also ain't got no vision. You also ain't got no direction. Right. You don't have, you're not bringing nothing else to the table. And so you can't be like, well, I'm doing this. You need to, no, uh-uh. That's not that. What it is, is, is if, if I'm legitimately working on our future, 
legitimately setting things up, legitimately working on direction for what's going to happen next. Yeah. Legitimately. Uh Uh-huh. And you're legitimately holding it down. At the crib, male or female, because this ain't a male or female thing. We're just yeah. talking about things that need to be done. Yeah. Whoever is operating in whatever realm, if they're both legitimately operating in those realms, then I think that that should be the realm that they operate in. And it don't mean that if, if, if a woman is more focused on the home, that she can't, you know, be focused on some future things either. Or if the man is focused on future things that he should never be washing the dishes or bringing the clothes down or running a vacuum cleaner. It's not saying that. It's saying you probably do have a more dominant it's way the, that you It's flow. the intentionality of the thing. It is legit. If you are a man that's out here grinding, hustling, you're doing your thing, whatever, if you're working a nine to five or an entrepreneur, it's the intent of, I need to make time to spend with my wife. That's it. It's the intent of, let me make these dinner reservations because I haven't seen her in five or six days. For the woman, it's, let me go ahead and do what I need to do so that I can go spend time with my husband. Let me make sure X, Y, and Z is done. Them little Negroes is in the bed at 930. Why? Because I'm intentionally wanting to spend time. This is what it says, and we're going to end here, y'all. Even when life gets chaotic and busy, spending time together can be a daily Facts. O- oasis of love. Oh, an oasis. Take a break from the chaos Ooh. and enjoy just being together for a while. Watch this each day, whether you go out or stay home. That's intentional. That's it. Right there. That's each it. day. Every day. Yeah. That's intentional. Y'all, every day, yeah. be intentional with each other every day when it comes to time. Yeah. That does not mean be on your cell phone. That does not mean nothing else. That means you shut everything else out. And you make sure, I don't care if it's, if it's seven minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just be intentional on the time when it comes to your spouse. Absolutely. It'll make your marriage great again. It'll make it great again. Y'all listen, that's it for hey, this episode. Uh, Go to try. YouTube. It's going Make down. Marriage Great Again podcast Bow. on YouTube. Bow. Subscribe. Bow. Um, watch it. Go back and watch old episodes. Uh, send it to your friends. Text it to them. You share like, it with them. Crank it with me. Um, Come on. No, my lord. Two, no, I'm trying three, to get this stuff done. Three. So listen, see, same as synergy. See, she wanted me to do the same thing. I'm trying to be synergistic. Uh, but anyways, go to Facebook, Make Marriage Great Again podcast. Watch it, share it. Go to uh, IG, MMJ podcast, watch it. And go to YouTube it. and yeah. subscribe, subscribe to, to the, the channel. Y'all, come on, man. Y'all be getting on my nerves. Subscribe anyways, to the channel. Anyways, we love y'all, man. Until the next time. Peace, Peace. out, homies. What? Oh, I wasn't recording the whole time. It's like I'm playing. <laughs> gotcha, niggas. <laughs>